what's hot? Let's talk about some of the good news in the economy. As I've indicated, when we're growing at 2.4% or 1.8%, this is a big, big economic engine. And when it has a positive growth rate, even at 1.8%, it's generating lots of stuff. Let's look at some of the stuff. There's retail sales running through March of 2013. Notice how these bars, the most current ones, are way above where we were in the Great Recession. Fully recovered, expanding. That means that a lot of restaurants that were shuttered have reopened. Main Street's a little more lively than it has been. A lot of those outlets in the mall that had crepe in the windows have reopened or somebody else has reopened. Retail sales are picking up. Now the yellow line is pointing to the cash for clunkers effect. That's one program, cash for clunkers, that caused retail sales to explode. In our conversation a minute ago, we said incentives matter. You better believe they do. If you pay people to buy automobiles, guess what? They're going to get out and buy automobiles. And you stop paying them, well, you can look at the next bar. When you stop paying them, they stop buying them, and you kind of get back to norms. But So here's good news. Retail sales looking very, very healthy. Now, this is machinery, equipment, and supplies. Look at this. It's almost exploded. Something like we have not seen in recent years. This is new machinery, new equipment. This is going into mining, gasoline production, gas production, all kinds of manufacturing activities, bringing a lot of new machinery into the picture, and one of our major exports, machinery. Housing starts. The most recent observation, as you can see there, is for February. If I had the ones that came out last week in this chart, it would be even taller. We'd be up close to the one million line. There's the norm. That's the long run norm in terms of housing starts, about 1.6 million annually. Notice we're not close to it, but we are headed in that direction. Every step of the way generates more activity for people in drywall, Painters, plumbers, air conditioning people, people building houses, people building apartments. Rental type construction is exploding now relative to ownership type construction. But if we say, okay, when do we get back to the yellow brick road? If we continue at the current rate, and here's your naive forecast that says the future will look like the immediate past. When we fit that line to those most recent observations, now we can make a forecast as to when we get back. And there it is, 2016. That's not that far off. So this is now a driver for our economy that's going to get us above, I would say, the 2% growth rate, the 2.4, that we have been experiencing. Well, what about employment? Well, we're not back. We can play the same game and say, when will we get back? The recovery is rather steep, but we're not back. And 2014, hey, that's next year, if we continue at the current rate. So we have a healthier employment picture, but it's not nearly as healthy as the picture we saw on housing, the picture we saw on retail, the picture we saw on industrial machinery. Now here's manufacturer shipments, fully recovered, fully recovered. This is the manufacturing sector. All right. No more sackcloth and ashes for these guys, well above where it was in terms of output. But there's employment. Notice that right now, let's see, where are we? Uh, in terms of total employment, as you look at this chart, the blue arrows that I'm showing you indicate what happens to total employment each time we have a recession. I'm showing you two recent recessions. You get a sharp drop off in the number of people employed in manufacturing. What did we just say about manufacturing output? Remember? It's fully recovered. It's above where it was. But employment in manufacturing is well below where it was. And 
not disappearing. Notice that it's headed up a little bit. It's headed north. But you can see a large drop off uh, from where we were right about there in 2007. Big drop off in total employment. Big increase in output. What does that say? Large increase in productivity. It happens every time we have a recession in our history. You close the most inefficient plants first and you do not reopen them. The cost of labor is rising, not wages, but the cost of labor is rising because of fringe benefit costs, not because of wages. Wages are flat. But cost of hiring is going up. The cost of robots going down. Robots are getting cheaper. Labor is getting more expensive. Forecast, more robots, less labor, wherever robots can be used. They are used primarily in auto manufacturing, in world markets. BMW's plant in South Carolina has 25% robots, 75% labor. They are predicting that in the next 10 or 15 years, those ratios will reverse. It'll be 75% robots, 25% labor. Now that 25% labor may be as many workers as are working now because that plant continues to expand and get bigger and bigger and bigger as the world cannot seem to get enough BMWs. So it's a bright picture there. But as you look at robot utilization worldwide, it's rising because labor costs are rising and robot costs are going down. So we will see more of this. But notice this thing is picking up, and that gets us to this topic of reshoring. It's always fun when we invent a new verb. All right. We are now reshoring, we hope. Some people hope that some of that labor that went to another shore is coming back here. Now, it's hard to find the evidence for that, but you can find some things that look like it may be evidence for that. And part of it is in this slope that you see, this upward slope in these last observations. In fact, if you look back over a long series of a chart like this, you don't see this kind of increase. So notice we're coming out of a slump and picking up. So which industries? What are the industries that seem to be picking up as we go forward? To get a handle on that, I'm showing you the percentage change in value added by manufacturing. And as you look at this, you can see some lines that have increased markedly. Oil and gas, booming. Slowing down, but it has been booming. Mining, mining support. Durable goods, All right, those are the hard-hitting ones. Non-durables down below it. Uh, another look at the... Same thing, I'm showing you where wholesale trade is that sort of corresponds to this. There it is. Another look is quantity indices of gross output by industry. If you stare at this chart, the year 2005 is set at 1, or if you want to say 100, notice all those bars are the same height. And so the construction of this chart says we'll use 2005 as the base year. Any bar higher than the base year will be a growing sector. And so you can see as we come forward, bars that begin to shoot up above the 2005 level. And here, the most recent year, 2011, there are your hot industries, steel, aluminum, computers and electronics, machinery, and aircraft. Those last two are major export items. And so part of our speed right now is related to that. Here's natural gas reserves. This is just giving you an eye as to where in the United States there will be another boom in manufacturing that relates to the presence of cheap, cheap energy. That's where it is. These are the industries that are very sensitive to the price of fuels. So we can begin to pick the industries and the locations 